So I've been working a lot recently, which has meant that my kind of room has been a little neglected. And the reason why I mention this in relation to the title of this video is because I also did a night shift last night, which means that I basically need to stay awake for the next like good 18 hours so that I can sleep properly ready for a day shift on Monday. So for reference, it's currently Friday night at like almost 11 p.m. So I figured I would combine this reading challenge with the fact that I need to clean my room. Um, purely for the fact that there is a thing called audiobooks. And if you've been watching my videos from a little bit back, I had started The Goblet of Fire, which is the fourth in the Harry Potter series. Jesus Christ, I'm now trying to remember like the order of Harry Potter. I'm trying to read that. It's a lot, fairly long book. I know it's not the longest, but also it's long. And I haven't even got to the good bit. And I'm already, when I read it, I was already 200 pages in and I've listened to half an hour of this audio work from the chapter of 16. So I haven't reached chapter 17. I don't know what page I'm on, but I'm only like 250 pages in of this like 600 page book. So yeah. I figured let's combine me needing to clean, listening to an audiobook and trying to read for 24 hours. Now, am I going to read for 24 hours in a row? No. I'm going to do it how Rachel does this challenge where she'll like pause the timer, just pick it up over different days. So although I am going to try and read as much as possible on Saturday, I've kind of got the weekend to do this. So yeah. Let's try and get this done in two days. Very much likely that I won't be able to do it. Because obviously 12 hours a day of reading is a lot. And we all know with my reading for the timer, I still haven't edited that or uploaded it, so I don't know what that title will be. Um, but you know where I spin a wheel and it decides how long I read for. We all know how that went. So I could fail. This could take me like a week because I am literally working five days next week. Is it five? No, next week isn't five days. Yes, next week is five days. Yes, next week is five days. I am working five days next week. So it could be that you kind of don't get this video completed until next Friday. Um, so yeah, but I have faith in myself. I do, I do have faith. Um. So let's try and get this done this weekend. I, for the first time, read during a work day. Like, I read on my lunch break, mind you. I don't have it tanned, but I have been reading Once Upon a Broken Heart, which, although it should have been a November read, it's kind of just turned into a December read. But to be fair, the person who does the book club is currently on a month-long holiday, so hasn't set a book for this month. So you know what? We're taking that as an invitation that it is the buck for both months. Um, so yeah, I will start the timer. I don't know whether I'll record a clip of it, but I will start the timer, I promise you that. And let's get to me like sorting out my room, sorting out my life um, and reading lights. Cause you know, we love a little multitasking queen. Someone put Potter's name in that goblet. So it is now 3 a.m. and I have quite literally listened to three and a half hours of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I have just got up to the chapter with the Yule Ball. I'll go grab my copy um, so you can kind of like see what page I'm up to. So for reference, I started listening to chapter 16, which was page 209. And now I'm listening to the Yule Ball. So I have technically read 339 pages. So that's what, 120, 100 and 130 pages that I have listened to. Honestly, it's pretty impressive, granted, how long would it have took me to read? Maybe two hours. So obviously audiobooks do take that bit longer to kind of get through, but that's an impressive chunk. So I think I'm now over, I think I'm now over half the way through. Yeah, I think I'm just over half 
bit of the way through this book um because I'm now here I started here just for reference um so yeah that much is what I've listened to um but honestly my ears were starting to hurt from like the pressure of the like earphones I've done a very good tidy up, tidy up in my room you can't tell from this position obviously because you can't really see stuff um but yeah and yes I'm holding Bow the bear I was partly sorting out my work not work my bed um I decided to no actually I'd like to point out the whole three and a half hours hasn't actually been me cleaning to start with did I do any cleaning no I literally played some Mario Kart I played this other thing where there was like shuffleboard on it I didn't play for stuff very long um but yeah I played a little bit on the Wii then I did them clean some cleaning and just tidying up have I finished no because I find that unless I've got loads of energy for it I need to do it in short bursts like I can get motivated in short bursts but I can't do it all in one go I've kind of got up to that point definitely gonna take a break might listen to some like music or whatever like via my google if i'd have continued like doing reading the full like 24 hours in one go i would literally finish at half 11 tonight um which technically i could do but i don't want to like i said my goal is to try and get half done each day but at the same time do more today so that then it's less tomorrow you get what i mean also now that i'm cleaning it will mean that i'll be able to put away all of like my christmas not well i'll be able to put out all my christmas stuff properly and just make things look a little bit prettier that's kind of all that i'm up to so far but i'm literally starting a new puzzle so it's quite nice that's kind of where i'm up to um i've got 20 and a half hours to go which does seem like a lot but the fact that i've just done that big chunk in one go is a big thing so as always i'm really bad at this challenge in the sense that um i it's sunday night at half seven and um i haven't read a single bit today i've done puzzles but i haven't done a single bit of reading um and when i did read on saturday it was audiobook um and all of and all of the time i spent reading apart from half an hour was on harry potter and the goblet of fire the other half half an hour was me trying to get into like a festive audiobook but it's like the names are really like earthy and like so and just not normal names like i don't mind it if there's like one or two maybe three based off the amount of characters i don't mind if there's like three four that have um like more unique names but this was literally like every single name was what people would class as hippie names and I was just not here for it um like one was one was like meadow one was star then there was like bear um and I just I couldn't get into it at all it could also be the um voice of the like narrator as well like just it wasn't for me Anyway, I have just under 18 and a half hours to go. I think it's like 18 hours and 23 or something. That's obviously not a lot of reading done. My current plan is to maybe do some to like night. But you know when you've kind of got too many options and like you don't know what to pick up? Like, I absolutely could pick up Once Upon a Broken Heart, which I haven't picked up since, since Thursday since friday morning during my lunch break which was at like 4 a.m i could pick up the perfect christmas village like part of me is really into the like i want to read a christmas book then it's like well i've already started a book that's kind of based around christmas well like 27 pages in and like i want to read but i'm like i've got so many other books that i want to read and it's just because this one's not like christmas focused like it's set around christmas but it's not christmas magical like based like none of them have like magic in them like the christmas ones but you know like that whole like that like magic of christmas you know like, like feeling so i really do want to pick up 
one of the three. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I literally have got three Christmas books, but yeah. And they, like, these two especially, um, which is The Perfect Christmas Village and Countdown to Christmas, they are both literally, like, Hallmark, not necessarily Christmas ones, like, the Countdown to Christmas one, the basis of it is, um, can be, like, just a general, like, romance, like, romance comedy, um, like, film where the character goes to, has, moves to a different country because they've, like, inherited or bought or won this certain, like, thing, usually, like, a building, which I think is what I love and so would get me into the Christmas spirit. Or this is the quite literal, like, character who hates Christmas and they slowly learn to love it and then fall in love in the process and then this one's just like a christmas book club one like it it literally has the christmas book club as its title i really want to read a christmas another a different christmas book but honestly i'd feel guilty because i'm like i should really like read more of this Especially because we've got to, we're still in the point of like learning what like the secrets are that are being hidden from everyone. There's too many books and that's just the Christmas ones. And that's not like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Yes, I literally have all of my TBR books on my bed because um, they were close to my door and they were in the way. I literally have too many options. I think I'm going to pick up a different Christmas book. Not that this is bad and I do think I'm going to end up enjoying this, but I just... I think I'm feeling something proper Christmassy. You know what, I've made the decision. I'm gonna pick up The Perfect Christmas Village to hopefully kind of count down on like the amount of, like to reduce the amount of hours that I've got. Cause I've eight. It's literally just, I need to wind down, wind down ready for bed. Cause I have to be up at 5.30 as I have a shift. Maybe I'll pick a, maybe I'll pack a book in my bag. You know what, maybe this could be like my work book read um i don't know the perfect christmas village by bella osborne so let's read it okay so i'm now like an hour like almost an hour in and i've read 54 pages and honestly i know not a lot happens in the first 50 but also at the same time so in some ways so little has happened literally all that has happened is She's talked about like selling this house for a dead guy, but she doesn't have permission to sell it yet. And all she's done is like she were around this guy, around this property, and a few talks with a friend. And it's just like, I know stuff doesn't happen, but also I feel like stuff should have happened because there's just over 350 pages in. So obviously a lot can happen in 300 pages, but also, I feel like stuff should have happened already in 50 pages and it's not um I, but yeah i've got i think it was 17 hours and 35 remaining for reading i might only read for another like hour or two um i don't necessarily i don't let's just say it how it this book sets up is it starts in like june like end of may and we kind of follow along in the months i think we might have like a time jump but we're literally following along like each chapter seems to like go on like a week so it's just it's taking a while i kind of wanted it to be more focused around christmas time obviously i understand houses take a while to sell but also i kind of wanted it to be more of a it started in like september thing you know where it's already that like autumnal mood because when it started off and it was mentioning like May, it was like, what? This is a Christmas, um, but like, this is to do with Christmas. Why are we talking about June? Like May, June, and it's just, yeah. It's probably not for me, but obviously it could improve. I guess I don't like this time jump. I don't know what, I don't know when these other books start okay so this one literally starts on the first beautiful and it and it did genuinely say that this one it doesn't say but i feel like it's set close enough to it and then again 
this one it's just closer towards Christmas time so it being set in June currently is really like throwing me like I'm just about to start chapter 7 which is the 17th of June it's just taking a while because it doesn't mention anything about having like a big like time like jump um in like the blurb but yeah I feel like I'm repeating myself but that's currently how it's going with this book I'm like I'm not really enjoying it for what it is like overall it's good but it's not like captivating me and it's not giving me that like Christmas like feeling so I've got 17 hours and two minutes remaining I think however I think I read for like 20 minutes longer than that but forgot to like start the timer anyway I've now read 107 pages so when I start back I'll be on page 108 I love how the moment I said like oh we're still in June I bet it'll go week by week it literally went from June to September which is perfect like finally currently we're in the whole like lead up to Halloween we are literally not at the point of even trying to convince this like this male interest to like Christmas there's no romance and obviously we've got 250 pages left so I know a lot can happen in 250 pages but I'm just feeling like this is going slow like give us like something like I understand this I feel like what will happen is it will be a very much an insta love towards the end like slow burn to get him to like Christmas and then it'll be an insta love like I don't know why I just I feel like that might be the case obviously now I've said that I could be wrong it's feeling a bit too like slow at this point but I think I'm gonna put down the book for the night just because I need to be up early tomorrow so I love how my first prediction of this might take me till Friday might actually be the case like I've read a fair chunk of it I've read almost I've read close-ish to a third. It might be the perfect Christmas village, but it's definitely not the perfect Christmas book. Like, I feel like the actual magic of Christmas is going to be crammed into, like, the last 100 pages. Like, what chapter does it start to get onto Christmas? Like, what month do we get into December? Literally. So, for reference, when I start back, I'll be starting on page 108 or chapter 13. First of December, like, the, um, chapter is literally on page 237 what did i say that it was literally gonna be till like the last 100 pages before it gets to christmas obviously like obviously i know there's gonna be some things like build up in like november like but so much there's so many pages there's a hundred and there's almost 130 pages just for basically november and i know probably some of you are watching it thinking just dnf it but it's not to the point of like it's completely unbearable it's just get me to the christmas like i would rather have it be that we kind of again like i said start the book in like september and have it be more of like a slow burn and getting to know each other okay so it's now probably over a week later um like I can't remember when I started filming this but I've definitely not filmed like spoken to you guys in a good week anyway so it's currently the 18th so we've literally got a week to go till Christmas um I can't remember how many hours I said I had last time but I currently have just under 14 and a half hours to go um so yeah I haven't done it I didn't do any reading over Friday and Saturday my timing is shorter compared to when you last when I last spoke to you just because there was a couple of lunch breaks where um I sat and read so it is when I say it's Monday I quite literally mean it's like almost half two in the morning um I worked yesterday I decided to just sleep like I just kind of got back I was awake for a little bit and I was like mm, we'll have a little bit of a sleep so I've been awake since like half ten um just playing some like sims watching some youtube videos and I figured you know it's probably best if I get on to reading now we have three options as to which books I can continue with I don't want to start another book 
part of me thinks it would be good to get one of these two done um just because they are kind of more festive and i have got other festive ones on there that i kind of want to try and get done by christmas um whereas once upon a broken heart can be left till afterwards so yeah maybe it's between these two maybe i'll read seven days of us um just because it's the one that i've kind of got most in my mind um so yeah starting at it's actually 14 hours and 27 minutes um okay so after i last spoke to you i literally did just pick up this book and um i finished it i'm currently undecided as to whether to rate it a 3.5 or a 4 overall it was like a 3.5 because it's like it's hooking me but it's also like not and for a brief period of time it had me thinking that things were going to work out all happy for one of the characters but then they gave me the ending that i was expected earlier in the book but because we'd had this like oh maybe everything's going to be okay it shocked me it had this whole like happy like scene with the characters and then they give the thing that we knew was going to happen but also like again i was lured into like a false sense of security into thinking everything's gonna be fine this character's gonna have a happy ending no i feel like it's gonna end up being a four also i'd like to point out i don't really like working in 0.25s in terms of like rating hence why i go between 3.5 I feel like for the ending, even though I should have expected it, and I did expect it, but it was also like, I thought, oh, things are going to work out all happy for Olivia. No, it's probably going to be a four. Is it my highest rated four? No, but it's a good book and I would recommend it. It's not overly like, fest. it's not a festive one. It's just set around that time. So if you're looking to for a book to get into the festive mood this isn't the book for you but at the same time if you're wanting to read one about like family and family dynamic this might be good for you um there is multiple point of views um so there is there's five point of views um i think there might be a chapter from a sixth point of view but there's like five main ones and that might sound like a lot but actually it's done really well because obviously they've all got these secrets and like inner thoughts where the families don't like understand them so actually i think it works quite well usually i don't like reading loads of point of views i do prefer like the two three like that's a good amount but actually i think it works really well in here I think that is that my first book of December finished. I think it might be. I think I need a moment to like process that though. So it might be like an hour or two before I pick up another book. But I think when I do pick up another book, I think it will be the perfect Christmas village. Just I want something different. And although Once Upon a Broken Heart is obviously fantasy, so it's different. I feel like. I don't know, part of me feels like it's going to have some air of similarity and like overall feeling. And so I just kind of want something that's a little bit more light hearted. I don't know. Mm, yeah, I probably don't make like sense. But I think what I'm going to do is finish another one of these books and then I might then consider picking up another. I have three other festive books. Christmas Book Club countdown to christmas and one december day which i did buy recently um okay so it is now what would be basically half 11 at night i have i can't remember last time i talked to you was this morning that's right so i can't remember how many hours i said i had remaining at that time i feel like it was like 12 and a half hours so i now have nine and a half and also I finished The Perfect Christmas Village. I, I rated this three stars. I'm happy with that rating, at least in terms of like the Goodreads rating, like it definitely wasn't a four. 
but it also wasn't a two. Um, it was a good book. It was nice to read. I didn't really connect with the characters and it didn't give me the Christmassy spirit, like the Christmassy vibes. It kind of seemed like it was only like the last third really that started focusing on Christmas. Bromance was nice. I think the main male character is classed as Grumpy Sunshine. I don't know the full like thing, only in the sense of like started out like having an aversion to Christmas and then now is kind of like accepting it. Um, so I think that's classed as Grumpy Sunshine or it's very similar to it. I enjoyed the little twist regarding Murray. Well, technically both twists. You understand what I mean if you've read the book. But I felt like the Christmas magic was lacking. Now that could just be I expected there to be more and so had kind of too high expectations for this like book. But it was a nice read. I would recommend. Probably won't pick it up next year though. Like I don't see it as being one that I'll reread, but it's good to have read it. Also, I bought a new book today. <sighs> I bought Love Light Farms. Everyone has been reading this this season and it was an Asda. Feels quite short. 304. I could tell by the feel of it that it was quite short. At least in terms of... Is it weird to say I'm now starting to be able to tell the difference in terms of feel between a 350 page book and like a 400 page book and somehow I'm able to easily guess it. Anyway, could tell this was shorter than the 350 but to be fair I feel like actually if this is just focusing on Christmas actually that's kind of what you want. We've all come across Love Light Farms or most of us probably have based off this community but it says a handsome freckled data analyst, a messy optimistic Christmas tree farm owner, a small town with the best hazelnut lattes on the east coast. In an effort to save the Christmas tree farm she's loved since she was a child, Stella enters a contest with insta-famous influencer Evelyn St James. With the added publicity and the huge cash prize, she might be able to save the farm from its financial woes. There's just one problem. To make the farm seem like a romantic destination for the holidays, she lied on the application and said that she owns Love Light Farms with her boyfriend. Only there is no boyfriend. And her best friend, Luca Peters. He just came home for some hot chocolate and somehow got a farm in a serious relationship in the process. Will their fake love affair save Love Light Farms in time for Christmas? So, there's definitely, uh, um, like, Netflix films about it there's definitely one um from the sounds of it is going to be a friends to lovers kind of like romance um like starts off as like fake dating and they fall in love you know i'm sure everyone's read love like farms at this point why have i gone cold even though i've got the heater gone anyway um yeah so i picked that up Although we all know I do not need more books, but hey ho, um, it is what it is. I don't know what I'm going to pick up next. Maybe I'll pick up this because it's a shorter read, or maybe I will pick up um, Once Upon a Broken Heart, just because it's been quite good. Well, it's been quite nice to finish books in this like. 24 hour um like reading challenge um obviously i know i've done it over like a period of time like a longer period of time just due to working but obviously in my mind i've had like the incentive of oh i need to finish this for a video so it's been quite nice um in terms of once upon a broken heart i've probably already stated how far along in this book i am um but i have read 175 pages so i think i'm like 45 percent of the way through um so i don't know what i will pick up um next obviously i will let you know in like the next like, clip maybe i'll sit for a moment and do something else and then come back to reading just because otherwise i'm going to end up it's a bit to say burning myself out with reading people do end up doing that so it's not completely wild but yeah I'm enjoying this time where I'm just 
let my sleep routine go and I'm just awake as and when I want to be. That sounds really bad. But I meant in the sense of like, I'm not sticking to like daytime hours. I'm like allowing myself to be awake at night, sleeping partly during the day, just so that I love night times. Don't know what book I'll read next, but maybe I'll puzzle or play Sims. I love Sims. And also I did buy the full rent pack. I know none of you readers will care, but I bought the full rent pack. What the fuck was that? Okay, so I'm currently in the middle of filming other stuff. Well, I technically finished, which is why I'm sat here. Anyway, since I last spoke to you, I read 30 pages of this. I think I've just hit a slower point of this book because I couldn't read more than the 30 pages. So currently I've read 203 which is obviously a good part of the book. Is that like, it's half. I've read half of the book, basically. Yeah, I've read half of the book now. Um, yeah, I think I just hit a slower point. I haven't read it in basically 24 hours at this point because it's currently 4 a.m. on Wednesday. Um, so I think I'm gonna pick up a different book. I'm split between two though. So first book that I'm thinking of is The Christmas Book Club by Sarah Morgan. Um, I think I've already explained this in a previous clip so I'm not going to do again. Or Between Love Light Farms, which I think I again I explained in a previous clip. Um, this is shorter, it's like 300 pages, this is like 350. I don't know which book I want to read. I've got two of the festive romances, not festive romances, but I've got two of the festive books but I don't know I'm just I'm not drawn to them as much as I am these two. Part of me thinks I'll end up being drawn to this one just because it's shorter, so it might be a slight quicker read. And also, in some ways the text feels bigger, it might not be, it could just be like my imagination. But it could be that little bit quicker, um, which will be good for this like challenge. So I've still got nine and a half hours left, but I thought I'd give an update. Thought I'd give you a little update. I've got about nine and a half hours to go. Okay, so it's now Wednesday night. Yeah, it's like eight. It's like ten past eight on Wednesday. I I only read for 20 minutes last night when I spoke to you. I started Love Light Farms. I feel like it shouldn't come as much of a surprise because it was the one that I think I was probably leading towards anyway. Um, so yeah, but I'm only like 20 pages in. Um, I have 8 hours and 45 minutes remaining on the timer. I'm going to, I need to wrap up Christmas presents. I go home tomorrow, but I'm not going to wrap the stuff on camera. I'm just going to show you what I've like bought. So let's start off with my little sister. Um, so for my little sister, I got her this puzzle. So she's had, um, a 100 piece puzzle before, um, and she really enjoyed it. Uh, let me focus in. It's actually all the Disney characters. She, I gave her a puzzle for her birthday. Then, um, from the works, actually, I got her A Puppy's First Christmas by Holly Webb. She was an author who I read. She once pretended to read Red, White and Royal Blue. And she was, like, sat there for a good five minutes. Five, ten minutes. And there was, like, no pictures in it whatsoever. So in here, there's the very odd, like, illustration throughout. So even if she's just flicking through it, reading, pretending to read a couple of words on the page, I'm hoping that it'll help her. Could just be wishful thinking. Um, my mum's going to say I spoil her, which technically I do, but honestly, why not? Then I got her the first two books in the Rainbow Magic, um, like, Rainbow Fairies series so I got her um I got her ruby and I got her amber so red and orange um these again they are small like big text and there is literally an illustration on each page so it'll be quite interesting for her to look at I got these from 66 books so even though the rated retail price is like five pounds um i paid how how much would i have paid for it i want to say maybe about two pounds for each which is obviously quite nice and again i'm just trying to build up her like reading book 
like her books that she owns she's more into puzzles i will say hence the puzzles but she seemed interested in my book and i have got some books that technically i've kept for her from when i was younger there's the odd hollyweb one um but they're just like the animal ones or like the um battersea dogs and cats home like ones but i've kind of got those saved for her they might be quite nice at the moment um and then i picked up is it should i put in here yes then i picked up something for her recently i picked up a detangling brush i'm pretty sure that she likes my one i saw this in boots um i was looking for something else um but didn't get it decided in my mind against it but i saw this and thought she'd like this and i think she does like my detangling one so maybe you know maybe she wants her own um so that is all i got my little sister let's do a little segue on to my nana's dog he's got this little fox um this is like this is from tesco this is like previous ones that i've gotten which have this like same it's like waffle type texture um on like the body the previous ones had stripy arms but he likes these type ones um and it was a fiver then for my mum's partner it doesn't look like much but in here there's some jack daniel fudge i didn't take it out of the box that it was sent in it was in like a packaging i will say um or was it no i think it was just a sticker on the front i've kept it in this because it's got like the nice like christmas um tape around it and then i'm just gonna wrap it as well then for my mum i got her some perfume it's the little black dress one from avon she asked for this like thank god she knew what she wanted then for my nana yes this is some brandy i think this was six pounds fifty so originally I was planning on giving her The Late Show by Michael Connolly um, because it's like a crime one, she likes them. Now, I think she likes this author, but I know that she likes Harlan Coben, so I'm actually going to give her Backspin by Harlan Coben, but maybe I'll keep this as backup just in case she's accidentally read this book because she has read a lot of this author's books. But I'm thinking, maybe is this like an older one of the books? Um first published in 2002 so she might not have read it and that's my thoughts and that is literally all because i have a very small amount of people to buy gifts for um whilst i wrap these i'm going to listen to um probably a chapter of harry potter and the goblet of fire i don't know how many pages technically i'm currently in um i last spoke to you would it have been yesterday i want to say yesterday um i don't know when it was anyway i still <laughs> i haven't read any more since i last spoke to you oh i think it was when i was updating you on so the last time i spoke to you i said i was gonna do washing and listen to harry potter and the goblet of fire i did do that i listened to a chapter which was like 50 minutes i've got seven hours and 54 left i'm gonna pick up love life arms again i'm only 20 pages in and no very anticlimactic but yeah it's now a little bit later so when i last spoke to you i had was it seven hours and 58 56 something like that i now have six hours and 16 minutes to go so i've read for a good like hour and a half um remember i started on page 20 i've now read 99 pages um so that's what 79 pages that i've read so i'm basically i'm almost a third of the way through the book we're now just getting to the part of like the real kind of like fake relationship bit um and that's not a spoiler because it is literally written on the blurb but we've got to the point where they've just kissed uh, and all of that good stuff I'm enjoying it so far i think i think it's too early to rate it i don't think this will be any lower than a 3.5 obviously it could end up being like 4.5 because some of these are like really cute and like cozy and i'm really enjoying it but then sometimes i don't know whether it's just because i really wish i could sleep that i'm like half not like fully into the book I think it's cute about the whole like 
air freshener thing. The most recent one and like how he's able to like hide it. It's really cute. That's unique. But yeah, I'm currently not sure of how I think. I'm enjoying it and I'm going to read it. And I'm hoping that the second third of the book will kind of give it that like four star feeling. Because I do want this to be a four stars. And I do see this as being like a thing that could potentially happen in real life. That's kind of my current thoughts. At least I'm now like more of the way through the book. I still don't know whether it's because I've just read a lot of festive romances recently that it's like a lot. Um, and I've got like three more. Okay, so it's now quarter past one on the... What day is it today? Jesus Christ, what day is it today? It is Saturday. Okay, so quarter past one in the morning. You're probably thinking, okay, so how many pages are you into Love Life Farms? Okay, so slight update. I read another chapter of it yesterday, so I'm now on, I've now read 116 pages. Um, was it yesterday? Yeah, it would have been yesterday. Yes, yeah, so I kind of haven't picked that up since. I don't know why, I've just not been feeling like the want to. So I decided to pick up another festive book because it was like, you know what, the amount of time that I'm like spending putting off picking up that book, I could be picking up another book that grabs my attention more. So I picked up The Christmas Book Club and I have currently read 83 pages of this book. So as you can see, I've had a much easier time with it. I've got four hours and 37 minutes. Did I mention that? I can't remember. Um, and I am loving this so far. This, so in total, this book is just over 400 pages. Um, so I'm close to 25% of the way through and this book is just gripping me. I don't know whether it's because the text is slightly bigger. Let me go to the the text is just much bigger um so i don't know whether that makes it easier for me to go through um but it's just it's so nice currently have we had a chapter from everyone yeah we've had yeah we've had a chapter from the four characters that will be involved in the book so we're kind of getting to learn their lives their roles like what they do for a living so like Hattie is the inn owner and so we've seen a bit about the runnings of the inn. We've seen Erica and like her career and what she does. Claudia and her kind of what's going on in her life. And then also Anna who we've seen part of her life and her family. And so it's quite nice because I think next we'll just be kind of more getting into like the whole inn um and like how their lives like intermingle in their like in the visit that erica claudia and anna have to this inn um i'm supposed to be trying to fall asleep in the sense that i slept till 3 p.m yesterday but i do also kind of just want to finish this like reading challenge because i know it's been so long i'm enjoying this so far it's gripping me and I'm not putting off Love Like Farms, but I'm thinking maybe but the Perfect Christmas Village had too much, like, even though it had different stories at the same time, it was all about finding a solution to a problem, um, and it was set in a Christmas scene, and this could end up being the same, and there is a secret, um, that we'll find out later that Erica is hiding. So I would highly recommend picking this up if you are in America and potentially um, like Australia. I think that's called the Christmas Book Hotel. There's a US title. You, if you're interested in this book, Google it. Okay, so it's now three o'clock in the morning. Anyway, so update on this book. I have now read 153 pages. I'm loving this. So far, even though I'm only 36% of the way through the book, I feel like this has the potential to be a five stars. Not for like the reason, mainly for the reason of like, I just, I just keep want, I just want to keep reading it. Like my usual books with romance, I feel like they've never been like a three 
like they've always been like a 3.5 for maximum mainly because the romance hasn't been like a main point it's either been like a subplot or it's been like a half and half so like for example with powerless it was kind of like a yeah like it was a dual thing um this i guess the romance well there isn't even romance jesus christ so far it's just like friendships and whatnot which to be fair now thinking about it, it does make me think of the movie the otherhood um also i like to put that in the background i've got some fireplace ambience on but it's like one with like christmas trees and like lights around the fireplace and it's so cute so this is kind of just looking at like friendships is gonna and like the complexities of people's lives this could be a potential spoiler what i'm about to say it's a prediction but it also could be a potential spoiler but i think it's going to end up being that the character erica is a sibling of hetty just because there's this whole like mystery and the fact that when she phones up to book the stay at the inn there's some like tense thing of like finding out that the woman she's speaking to is Hattie and I just and Erica has this issue about her father having left just after she was born Hattie although her father was literally the perfect father she lost her mother a week into her life and I just I have a feeling that it's going to be that that granted there is an age difference between the characters but I feel like it's going to end up being that it's their siblings there's this thing about Hattie yeah I just I just have this feeling there's gonna be a family connection but yeah that's kind of currently where I'm up to at this point but I'm gonna sadly put down the book for the night okay so the 24 hours is now up I finished the Christmas book club I loved it I'm rating it five stars it was just cozy and it did have the Christmas spirit that I was looking for honestly when I was reading these festive books I was thinking I hope there's a five star in one of these books because there's a fair few um I haven't picked up Love Like Farms in the final 20 minutes I decided to pick up The Countdown to Christmas by Joe Thomas um I didn't continue on with the timer in the 20 minutes I just looked at the clock and then read a bit more so I'm 38 pages through I will say the format of this confuses me a little like there's not oh i can't even see there's not that much text on a page like i'm used to it taking up more both in terms of like height so like i'm used to taking it more up to here or like further down and it seems to to like format it like for example this text absolutely perfect in terms of like size and everything but you see how it fills the page i've just got to the point in this book where she decides to go visit this place that she's been told that she's like inheriting like she that she might be the owner of um which isn't a spoiler because it's literally written on the blurb so it's meant that i've read four chapters don't really have any thoughts on it so far it's quite easy to get through i think it's because less text on the page overall so maybe it'll be a fairly quicker read there's like 350 pages there is quite literally 350 pages um that might be a nice one but yeah i haven't picked up love light farms but once i finish countdown to christmas love light farms the only one that i will have left is one december day because you've got to think i basically finished that in 24 hours pretty much which was quite nice because it was so easy to read i would highly recommend it was so nice and i loved how everything was explored including like grief and like finding basically in some ways found family yeah and also if you were watching earlier my prediction was a spoiler so sorry about that if you actually decided to watch it i'm gonna leave that video off there because obviously we finished 24 hours i hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you want to see in another video and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys